why I haven't purchased any bags from these seven luxury brands and do I see that changing in the future? Hey everyone, Steph here. If you are a lover of all things luxury, you my friends are in exactly the right place because we get it and not everyone does, so make sure you join us. So this is a tag video and I believe that this was originally started by Lisa from Luxury and Life in the Middle and then since then I have been tagged by Dale's Addiction and also Living Looks with Meredith. I will link to all their channels down below who I absolutely love those guys. They have tagged me and I thought this was a really interesting topic, one that I've not really covered before. Some of the popular luxury brands that I have never purchased a bag from, why I've never purchased one from them and do I see that changing? in the future. I will pop links to these brands and also specific bag styles that I mentioned throughout the video in the description box so that you can shop this super easily. But the first brand that I wanted to talk about is Celine. I have never purchased a bag from Celine. In fact, I don't own anything from Celine at all, but it's very much a brand on my radar right now. I feel like over the last six to 12 months, this brand has kind of exploded and it's slightly in line with the silent or quiet luxury trend that we are seeing right now because a lot of Celine's bags are very low key. They don't have big logos on. They do have like the Triumph logo on, but they don't necessarily shout Celine. So why have I never purchased from Celine before? In all honesty, it is just a brand that has just not appealed to me previously. I have been collecting a lot of Louis Vuitton and Chanel and it is only now, now that I have quite a few pieces, I do have you know quite a few pieces with logos on as well, that I am looking at something that is more low key. And it is the Teen Triumph bag that had got me looking at Celine as a brand and the bag range. I went into Harrods in a recent shopping blog, tried it on because the black shiny leather with the Triumph logo on in gold, I just think it looks so incredible. It is everywhere all over Instagram and I really want to try one on. I did recently try it on as well in the Arctic white with the gold hardware, which is a new release of the bag in terms of the color. And it did look absolutely exceptional. So I've been very tempted. But as I was trying the Team Triumph on, I actually saw the 16 bag on the shelf in the background. And again, a bag that I've never really considered. It is carried by celebrities such as Angelina Jolie and Lady Gaga is well known for wearing the Celine 16 as well. And I just saw the leather. So this is a satinated leather in black. The small size was the one that spoke to me most, but the mini was also really, really cute. And we don't really have a logo on here. And I actually think in terms of what I like from a bag right now, where I'm at in my life, what, when I like to use my bags, I appreciate a top handle. I appreciate being able to cross body the bag because I would definitely see myself out and about shopping with this. So ease of use, the fact you can stand it up, the fact that it's low key, that I can travel on public transport and not really worry too much about you know having big logos on it. I definitely think in the future I will have a Celine bag in my collection. So this one I'm sure is going to change. Brand number two that I have never purchased from is Loewe. So again, quite a low key brand. And I would say it's probably most popular for the puzzle bag, which I think is really beautiful, but I decided the shape of the bag was just a little bit too boxy. And I don't really like the, the top handle of the bag so much. I have never purchased anything from this brand purely because none of their pieces have appealed to me enough to forgo Chanel or a Louis Vuitton, for example, and actually purchase from the brand. However, I will say that they have released a like laser cutout tote bag and it's like leather cutout in this beautiful pattern. I've seen them in person and it was just gorgeous. I also tried on a couple of like mini tote bags as well with the anagram logo on the front of the bag. Fairly low key, but it is Loewe's logo. But I guess if you know, you know, if you don't, you don't. And these are the first pieces from the brands that have really appealed to me in the sense that I could actually see them in my collection. And I am actually currently debating. So let me know what you think. Possibly getting rid of my Saint Laurent tote bag here, um, which I use when I go on beach holidays, for example. I do really like this. It is in the sea salt colorway, so it's very neutral. I'm maybe swapping this out for the laser cutout Loewe bag just because it's a bit different. And again, we don't have a big logo on this one. Please help, let me know in the comments. Do I swap this one out for this? Steph from the future here because I completely missed out brand number three that I've never purchased from. So it's actually Bottega Veneta. Why have I never purchased from Bottega? 
I have been in the store quite a few times recently. I have actually tried on quite a few of their bags. They are very understated. We don't have big logos everywhere. And I can say from feeling some of these bags, obviously not owning any, the quality does feel exceptional. However, I do feel like because Bottega doesn't have logos on things, they are very easily copied. And some of their popular bags, like the chain cassette bag, uh, the Jody bag, there are lots of rip-offs now of this that are a hell of a lot cheaper. And to be honest, I have never fallen in love with any of Bottega's styles enough to actually make a purchase. However, recently the Andiamo tote bag has been brought out and I must say I absolutely love it. It has like a, a not metal detail on the front of it. I think this is absolutely gorgeous, but because my work has changed a lot, I don't actually use tote bags that much anymore. Can I see myself buying anything from Bottega in the future? I definitely wouldn't rule it out completely, but as of right now, there definitely isn't any bags on my current wish list. I'm definitely looking at other brands more. I think if I do ever get a Bottega bag, it will probably be pre-loved and to make hopefully a big saving on recommended retail price. Because like I said, I do feel like the quality is there for this brand, but I don't quite love any of them enough to warrant the price point. Brand number four is well and truly on my radar and that is Bulgari. Again, this isn't a brand that I've looked at particularly in terms of its resale value. It doesn't hold its value so well. That is something that I will say about all of these brands. I think Celine right now, out of the ones that I've spoken about, probably has the strongest resale value. And that to me has always been important when investing in luxury. Unless I really, really love a piece, if I can help it, I don't like to buy something that I know if I change my mind in six months, 12 months, or a few years time, I'm going to lose quite a lot of money. Whereas Chanel, Louis Vuitton, because of the price increases and the popularity, they do hold on to their value fairly well. So anyway, Bulgari. I have recently been trying on the ellipse bag and the cabochon bag, and I do think they are beautiful. Now, in terms of the price point of Bulgari bags, they have just had a price increase though. I do think they are really well priced for the quality you are getting. Like, let's take the uh, cabochon bag, for example. It is leather lined, and I would say it's around half the price of the equivalent from Chanel and arguably it looks quite a lot like this bag as well, the Chanel 19 bag. I'm not exactly sure what these retail for now, but I know it's a lot closer to 5,000 pounds, whereas the Cabuchon is just over 2,000 pounds in the UK. So for me, it is a brand that I have been looking at more and more because personally, I'm very happy with where my Chanel collection is at. I would love to have more 19s in my collection in, in all different colors, but personally, I actually think I would rather get a Bulgari. It looks quite similar, it's half the price, and I definitely don't feel like there is a huge disparity in terms of the quality. The customer service that I've received at Bulgari as well so far just from like going around the store and looking at bags has been so so good. So it is a brand that I can definitely see in my collection very soon. Brand number five is Salvatore Ferragamo. So again, this brand hasn't really been on my radar. It's not until the top handle bag, which is kind of being sold from influencers, for example, as an alternative to the Kelly bag that is easily accessible and it's not going to cost anything like what an Hermes Kelly bag would actually cost. So for me, the only bag that I have seriously considered is the top handle bag. It has like a metal lock through the front and it's very low key again. I do really like this. I love it in the shiny leathers. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I have been into store. I've seen them at Vista Village. I've seen some of their range that goes on sale and they do have some really beautiful prints. So I could definitely see a piece from Ferragamo in my collection in the future, but so far the only real contender is the top handle bag. I really do like the look of this one. In terms of the rest of their range, um, right now I don't think any of their pieces appeal to me as much as this one does. Brand number six, and this one surprises me. This is Fendi. I have never owned a Fendi bag. The Fendi first is probably the closest I've come to owning a Fendi bag. I really like the look of it. I like that it is something different. It would be something completely different for my collection. But when I am buying a bag, I do a lot of research on the pre-love market to kind of see where the bag wears and tears, how it will hold up over time. So I can kind of get an expectation in my mind of what that might look like. And I have seen the Fendi first with quite a few scrapes on some of the corners, like people just catching it on things. And I don't know whether I would actually get as much use out of it as I would really like to from a bag that costs this much. So, so far, I don't have a Fendi bag in my collection. Can I see one in my collection in the future? 
I would definitely not say no. I definitely can see one in the future, but right now I don't know what bag it would be. For me, Fendi is ready to wear. Um, I have a pair of Fendi shorts, um, I have a jacket, I've also got a few pairs of shoes from Fendi. I feel like for me, their ready to wear and their accessories appeal to me more right now than their bags do. But I do really appreciate that Fendi has some quite different styles of bags that we aren't seeing from other brands, like it feels more unique. And a bag that I've never really considered from Fendi is the Peekaboo bag, which is one of their most iconic bags. I tried this on in Harrods. I talk about this so much because it has left a mark on my soul. Honestly, it was that beautiful. It had diamonds encrusted in the handle. It was made from a gray croc. I believe it retailed around 25,000 pounds, but it's genuinely one of the most beautiful bags I have ever seen. I mean, it's probably the diamond handle, like it just set the bag off. It was so, so gorgeous. But I am now definitely looking at the peekaboo bag more as well. And finally, brand number seven that I have not purchased any bags from yet. And this surprises me slightly, I guess, because it's kind of considered the pinnacle of the luxury market. I have never owned an Hermes bag. Would I like to own an Hermes bag? Definitely. I would definitely like to add one of these bags, if not multiple, of Hermes to my collection. I'm now, now I'm quite happy with where my Chanel collection's at, where my Louis Vuitton collection's at. Hermes is the brand that I definitely have my eye on most. But if you are familiar with Hermes, the prices are super high and a resale market over the last year. I think even though we had an uplift throughout the pandemic, people staying at home and buying more, some of the, the bags that I'm looking at, so specifically a box calf leather Kelly bag, if you are selling one or know anyone that is, please send me a message over on Instagram. My handle is at handbag underscore holic, let me know. It would go to a very loving home. But honestly, like the prices I have seen of like a box calf 28 Kelly bag have skyrocketed. I'm talking like tripled over the last year, which is devastating because I'd like to add one to my collection. These are pre-loved vintage versions, but I think I'm going to be starting my Hermes journey properly. I'm actually gonna be putting some time and effort. I'm currently saving some money to start embarking on this because I know it's not going to be cheap. Again, if you're interested in following this, make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. But yes, Hermes is on my radar. Definitely some pieces in the future. I've always said I want a Birkin bag, but after trying on a Birkin and a Kelly, like the Kelly in the cellier with the box calf leather in black with gold hardware, it was a bit of a game changer for me. And I definitely think maybe a Kelly will actually be one of my first Hermes bags. So I'm quite excited to be exploring Hermes as a brand. Let me know which brands you've never purchased from, but are maybe curious about. Do you think it will change in the future? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again so much to Dale and Meredith from Living Looks with Meredith and also to Lisa for starting this great tag. I will link to their channels down below, but make sure you don't go anywhere because coming up next, I'll link my latest video release here for you. And over here, the best low looks bag that is so hot right now. I have two of them in my collection already. Enjoy.